Welcome back, guys. Sharpen this tour podcast, episode number 19. We are on part three of our four part series of starting your business. And today I'm here with co host, the number one co host in the world, Giovanni Jimenez. Hey, hey, hey. On this episode, guys, on part three of this episode, uh, series, we're going to talk about the legalities of starting a business. What does it take? And some things to look for and watch out for and not slip on while opening your business. But I want to put a little disclaimer, guys. We are not legal lawyers. We are not lawyers. We're not legal professionals. So um, seek professional advice when it comes to this stuff. All right? Amen. I always like to say it. My advice is not legal. But it is professional. <laughs> It's not licensed. There's no license behind my words. There's professional advice, guys. Believe me. <laughs> All jokes aside, this is, you cannot hold this legal. We're telling you right now, this is just advice. Hypothetically, this, what you would do. This is the best way to start uh, an episode on legal <laughs> advice, right? Yeah. So, on the last episodes, we talked first about the idea. Then we went into building the business plan, which we, we talked. The business plan is pretty much... The, a blank canvas that you paint to be your vision, your dream. That's your business plan. Next. So, all right, you got it all written down. You got it on paper. Now, let's put it. Now, let's add the government into it. How do you go about with the legal things, right? Like, obviously, like a street corn vendor, like a lot of Hispanics do. Like, they got the street corn. But you don't need a license, even though you do, right? But you can just go out and start selling the street. But when it comes to brick and mortar and the legal businesses, like let's say the LOCs, proprietorships, and all that stuff, them big words, I don't know. <laughs> but how do you go about that? So let's start with, this goes back way back in the day. I didn't know this, right? The government wants their hand on everything. All right? I was just a teenage kid on the block selling shoes whatever clean merchandise I can get and sell it, mm. okay? But even then, back in the day, I mean, until, until today, there's still a permit that you can pull to set up on the street and sell, okay? And so back in the day, I didn't, some places they didn't offer that, so they don't want you on the street selling. And some places they were expensive. And the third option was I just didn't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay so this is just me being honest with you right i never cared for it. i knew i was supposed to get a permit back in the day this is back in the day guys um to be on this corner selling stuff and you know forest city arkansas wherever it is and um i got away with this sometimes it's sweet talking to them and whatnot but i learned that there's a in this country there's a a way to do everything, and they want their hand on everything. There's money involved. There's permits. There's license. There's paperwork. You know, there's contracts. This stuff, okay, like I said, we are not legal professionals. We're just giving you a, a basic entry level to look out for, advice to look out for, okay? And so, and back in the day, guess what? I got kicked out off the corner for not having a, a permit. Mm. I got tickets for not having a permit. So now, I didn't make no money. I went negative because I didn't have a permit. Okay, now, when you're talking about a brick and mortar business, you cannot open a, a business without going the legal route, without doing your paperwork. You just cannot do it. If you do, you might. if you get away with it, it won't be long, and they're going to come shut you down. Mm -hmm. They're going to make you pay fines. And then they're going to send you to court. So it's, it's a big mess. So don't skip anything, guys. So you want to start off... By okay, we got the idea. You painted the canvas. You got your business plan on paper. Um, now let's let's open the business. Now I need to look at things related to the business. What do I need to do for this specific business? Because restaurants and and retail clothing, you're not gonna have the same thing. With restaurants, you need inspectors. You need, you know, you need certain things for the food. You need certain. Uh, Regulation that you have to follow for food. You, it's so many, so much more hoops you have to jump. Mm -hmm. You sell an alcohol, you have to be licensed, this and this. And if you're not licensed, then 
this happens and that happens. You go to court, you get shut down. So many things happen. Okay. So first of all, you want to start with what kind of business you're going to open. And this is research that you have to do on yourself or seek and seek professional advice. Is it going to be an LLC? Is it going to be a sole proprietorship? Is it going to be a S corp, C corp, corporation? Okay. What is it going to be mm-hmm. now for each one? There's different uh, pros and cons. Some have better tax benefits. Some protect you more than others, like the LLC. Okay? So you have to seek professional advice on which one you want to get. Now, you have to get a business license. You got to go to, you know, uh, a city and get a business license to open up a business in the city. And the business license is easy. Okay? Now, this is what I hate. Now, if you, let's talk about brick and mortar. Now you need to get inspections. They need to do a fire alarm inspection, a sprinkler system inspection if you got it, electrical inspection, sign, plumbing. People come in, and they need to check it, and they sign off on it. If you don't get all these signatures, you're not allowed to open a store. You're not allowed to open a business. Jesus, they need to check it, and they need to check, too. (laughs) Exactly, you know? (laughs) So that's another thing when you open a brick and mortar. Now, like I said, service industry, like... um, um, restaurants, there's many, much more hoops you have to jump. For example, when I opened the academy, the martial arts academy, I had two doors on the front, two doors in the back. In this town, there's a special regulation per uh, the ordinance, whatever, per square footage, per number of uh, occupants can be in the building, X amount. So for X amount of occupants that can be in this building at one time, you have to have a, a fire alarm exit door, which means it has to have the push. The push. So that means it was really never locked at all times. You can't open it from the outside, but you can always open it from the inside. Mm. And so I was not, I didn't know this at first. So the open day for us got pushed back like two, three weeks because of this specific problem. Really? I guess. And because it was a regular door. So they wanted two push bars on it panic alarm bars, fire alarm. Uh, push doors. That's why those two doors have the push. So we were, they pushed us back two, three weeks to opening. And the messed up part about it was I've already announced the, the opening day. So we had to make the opening day a soft opening, not an official opening. And that, we had to jump hoops. I had to talk to certain people and they kind of let me slide with it. And um, the problem was Nobody in town wants to take the legal responsibility of changing the liability responsibility of changing those doors because those two doors are heavy and they break a lot when you have to take them off the hinges and change them. So nobody wanted to do that. So there was one like one company from out of, from close by, like out of town, had to come in and do it. So that's just an example. There's a that's a fire code. Mm-hmm. Boom. You know, the other fire code was that we had to run into was we have MMA cage and boxing ring cage. If you look under them, there's metal, metal, um, like sheets, metal sheets covering up the opening. And that's because if there's a fire, they don't want the fire to go underneath the ring or cage and catch fire on the wood that's built of the ring, that builds the ring. That's why the building, the studs, everything in the building is is aluminum or steel. Mm. There's no wood. That's a fire code in this town. So we had to build that around the cage on the bottom because we broke a fire code. The other thing we had to do that we weren't allowed to open was on our jiu-jitsu mats, we had to put a ramp, okay? On the edge of one of the jiu-jitsu mats, we had to put a ramp. In case somebody has a wheelchair, they have to be able to go up the mats. Mm -hmm. And if I did not put that ramp, even though we say no shoes on the mat or nothing on the mat, they were not, we weren't going to let me open. They had to do the ramp in case it was like a fire? No, in case somebody that wants to get on the mat is in a wheelchair. So that's per their, this is all by the fire marshal. They better fall rolling to the mat, <laughs> you know? And so what else did he make us do? He made us do a few more things. Like they made us jump some hoops. So it was like every year, every two years, you got to replace the fire extinguishers? Every year they come in and check. They came in two weeks ago and they checked. And did another inspection. If there are fire, you have to keep updating the fire extinguishers. Okay? There's just examples right there. Okay? So you need to get permits for the business, uh, business license. Now you need pool permits to open a business. 
You need to pull a permit for the sign to put a sign on the building. If you want to commit, uh, open, uh, do construction, if X amount of dollars, uh, you have to pull a permit. Okay? And so there's a lot of things that you have to kind of do. And you have to make sure you, you do these because you'll get in a lot of trouble if you don't. Or you spend a lot of money if you don't. You get fined. Jesus Christ. It sounds almost as if you need to ask permission before you do anything in the business. That's exactly what it is. That's very pain. That's, that's, that's very stressful. Having to deal with that. You know? Because yep. like, that feels like you just don't have the liberty to do whatever you want. Nope. Well, obviously you could do it. But then, like you said, there's repercussions. They're going to set you down. Goodness gracious. But uh, another thing I wanted to mention to you about, like, um, when it came to that stuff, right? Like, there's regulation stuff. Like, um, like the wet floor signs, which I mentioned before. It's like, when you mop the floor or there's water on the floor, like, you got to throw down that wet floor sign. Because somebody slips, right? Somebody's grandpa comes in, breaks his hip. They, you're getting a goofy suit out of you, right? And that might be the end of your business right there. Yep. Right, um, how? Yeah, because I don't think people really think about this often. It was like obviously you always got to be watching out and thinking like five steps ahead, which you do very often. And I've learned to do is like you see the scenario, think five steps ahead. What could go wrong? Look into the future. How could this go wrong? And then to avoid getting sued. But how common is it in a business to get sued? Because I think like a lot of people. They're like, no, I wouldn't want to sue me. They don't respect that. But in the, America, the land of the lawsuit, the majority of people actually get rich lawsuits. Like, how common is it for people with lawsuit and to watch out for that kind of stuff? Um, so it, it can be common, you know. Um, it can be common, but you need to cover your T's, cross your T's, and dot your I's. You know, if you think five steps ahead, you try to negate most of what's happening. So wet floor signs, you know, stuff like that. Um, anything with lawsuits, copyright, trademarks, right? Um, this one's actually tried to be, they tried, there's a business that tried to use, tried to use this against me. Mm -hmm. They failed. Um, so they can keep trying if they want. They're going to keep losing. <laughs> <laughs> Undefeated. <laughs> um, so, um, Somebody's always looking out to get you. That's the way I look at it. Some people are like, Mo, you're paranoid. I'm not paranoid. Okay? So you need to cross your T's and dot your I's in everything you do. When you open your business, you, when you have, you know, your slogan, you have your logo, make sure nobody has it. Make sure you're not taking nobody's name. Maybe make sure you're not taking nobody's slogan. Make sure you have copyright trademarks on everything you do. Make sure you do all of this, right? If you enter a business relationship, partnership, investor, write a contract, you write it, you get a professional to write it, right? Um, because a lot of people get screwed in that kind of stuff. Yeah. Then you end up in court and you're spending a lot of money and it drains you and then you shut your business down. Then you feel like a loser or you feel defeated. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. Also, one thing that you mentioned is kind of like um, when it comes to paper and partnerships, it's like a lot of times... People will make partnerships and um, they'll a lot of times, and this is like back in the day, people signed contracts or made verbal contracts. They agreed on things verbally because back then people's word was worth as good as gold. You know, they say your word is as good as gold. But over time, we get degraded as people. Then there's a lot of scumbags, a lot of snakes. You agree, they don't keep the word. You agree something on word. It's not on paper. Next thing you get hosed down and legally there's really nothing you can do about it. So what do you say about that? Like when people go into things, right? Let's say partners, families, cousins, best friends, childhood friends, so-and-so. Oh, this is uh, my girlfriend's brother, whatever. We go into partnerships and things are just built on trust and not built written down on paper. Tough topic. People are going to be getting their, in their feelings over this one. Uh-oh. You know what I mean? Um, me, personally, I'm old school. Right? 
I take you off my word. Now, I'm not going to be old school right now to the point where, like, hey, you tell me, Lil Johnny said, hey, Mo, I give you my word. I, I We open a business, and I'm going to do X, Y, and Z. No, sir. This is going to be a contract. This is going to be a written contract. Okay? Now, small things, you tell me you're going to do something, I take your word. But if you break that word, I will never take it again. That's who I am. You tell me something, you don't do it, you can forget about it. I will never trust you again. Some people are like, Mo, you're extreme. No, I'm not. This is just the way it rolls. Back in the day, old times, all you had was your word. You broke your word, nobody took you serious. Okay? So, when it comes to business, there ain't no... And this is everything. People talk about prenups, and they talk about all this, and all that mess. And they're like, I don't want to sign a prenup. You know, you got my word. <laughs> yeah. You know, and they always break the word. <laughs> but um, in business, there's no word. It's a written contract. I know too many people that got burned. Mm. Way too many people that got burned. So rent contract, everything on paper, legal. Professional advice, lead lawyers, if you're going to do um, partnerships and stuff like that. On paper, signed, uh, notarized, everything. Crazy. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But I also want to talk to you. What do you think about people going into business with people close to them? You know? This is my two cents. I've done it before. I will never do it again. This is just me. Okay? I I think leaving family out of it is better. I think leaving friends out of it is better. But some people can make it work. You know, I'm sure there's a stat somewhere on online where it says 75% of business partnerships. You know what? Let's look it up. We pull out the stats. I remember one time there was this uh, funny joke. This dude... Famous rapper Boosie, I think. His brother stole money from him. He stole like a money phone. So it was a, you know what a money phone is? It's a stack of money that rappers hold to the phone. And you do like, like this with the stack of money? You they got the, the money phone? My man. <laughs> and he stole a money phone. And it was like, they, they say blood's thicker than water. But it ain't thicker than a $100,000 money phone. <laughs> <laughs> so, even family, man. According to Forbes. So Forbes. 70% of business partnerships fail. Wow. 70. There's other sources that estimate up to 80% of business partnerships fail within the first year. That's crazy. That's a crazy stat. That's crazy, bro. So these days, nobody really got a word. That's the way I look at it. People are like, you're a hard smoke. It is what it is. You know? Everything on paper, baby. Everything. Yeah. Sign, notarized, lawyers, everything. It's it's sad. It's sad, right? It really is sad. But the human these days is attracted by many things. By many th Anything can get me to look that way or this way. Mm. Anything can convince me to go this way or that way. You know, we talk about greener, the, the green cow effect, right? I, I made this effect up, right? It's greener on the other side. In relationships and business. All right? Business relationships, business partners. I can make more money here. I can take the business. I'm doing more work in the business. Why I don't get more money? All this pops up in your head. Okay? I should have got the business. He should have got the business. I, I built the business. He's, he's feed, eating off of my back. He's eating off my plate. I'm doing everything. Just these thoughts come up, and then you don't want to be in a business partnership. Or your partner is stealing from you. You know what I mean? So, everything, if you do it on paper, sign, notarize, everything. But me, I, I won't do it. I learned my lesson. Crazy. That's powerful. And I, I think that's, um, to some people, they're like, man, like that's just trust issues right there. But I mean, at the end of the day, that's just like insurance. That's just you protecting yourself. That's it. Preventing yourself from getting burned or scarred. That's it. I mean, they can, people can say whatever they want to say. They can say trust issues and whatnot. But why even, uh, the way I look at it is why put yourself in that situation? 
I'm in, I'm opening a business to make money to feed my family. That's it. At the end of the day, that's it. It's to feed my family and then after that, help help people around. Okay? And I want to do it as least stressful as possible because it's going to be extremely stressful. So why why waste my headache with somebody that is going to be, I know for me, per, me personally, they're not going to work a third of what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. Which I'm going to be pissed anyway. So I'm not going to waste my time with you. You know, but if I decide to do it, if you decide to do a business partnership, there's nothing wrong with it, right? But cross your T's, dot your I's. Have a contract, signed, everything, professional uh, contract on what you want to do to the T, in detail, to the T, what their responsibilities are, what your responsibilities are, what do they get out of the business, what you get out of the business, if you make this much money, if you make this much money, who has control, the majority control of the business, majority ownership of the business, if they want to get out of the business, how much do they get? If you want to get out of the business, how much you will get? You know what I'm saying? If the business fails, what do you do with the money? That, what do you do with the product? So all this got to be on there. Powerful. So be weary of partnerships. Yep. And I'm going to close it off with this, guys, is whatever field you go into, you need to seek professional advice, especially when it comes to taxes, right? Taxes... You know, you need to get a professional on this. I'm not going to talk about taxes. Get a professional on this. Um, whatever business you want to open, find a professional, a legal professional that can help you to spot things that you might slip on, right? Like I said, food industry is completely different. So uh, It's one of the hardest industries. There's a lot of hoops, inspections, and stuff like that you have to go through. And so whatever business you want, guys, Find legal professional and everything. Get an accountant. Get a CPA to help you with charge your bookkeeping and all and stuff like that. This way, you don't get in no trouble. Um, copyrights, trademarks, and stuff like that. All right. So this is just a little um, entry level, like I said before. Um, and that's it for episode three of navigating the legal system, guys, and starting your business. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. Let me know what you guys think of these episodes, guys. Because like I said, we're just doing a four-part series. We'll do more of these um, as time comes by. And um, like always, thank you so much for, for liking, comment, sharing, uh, talking about the podcast, repping the merch. Guys, we have a lot of different merch. We have T-shirts. We have hats. We have joggers. We have windbreakers and hoodies. So support support us. Just shoot us a DM, and we can get you some merch. It's on sale right now. And um, please subscribe to our YouTube. It will help us out a lot. Okay? Sharpen your sword physically and mentally so you can be better for yourself, family, community, and your country, guys. And we'll see you on the next episode of Sharpen Your Sword Podcast. Peace out.